How you doing? Um, I'm going to set the intonation on a friend's guitar, so I figured I'd do a little video, show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to assume that uh, this is for basic beginners. Most guitar players, most guitar players, know how to do this. But uh, if you're new to guitar, um, I'll show you how to do that. Intonation is important, especially if you are playing with distortion. You'll notice uh, if you play a chord at one part, sounds good, you play it somewhere else, and with distortion what you'll notice is uh, a wavering, wah, 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 or wah, wah, fast, whatever it is, the way it's different. With electric or with guitars, uh, one of the hardest things is the jump here where it has uh, the B right here, that it's instead of fifth fret, this one goes back to four, a little bit different. Some nuts, uh, like myself, some uh, nuts up here, you'll see they have a slightly different distance. What intonation does, it's all about the back part here, and what intonation does is set it so that it's in tune everywhere. By adjusting the distance the string has with the frets. So you usually see you'll usually see guitars when they have intonation they'll basically have uh, a classic um, a sawtooth where it goes down and then the next three go down like this basically like this and like this that's not the way it's going to be but generally it's going to be somewhat like that because of the different types of strings um, what you're doing when you do that is adjusting the distance and frame of reference you know shifting the frets where they are in relative to the bridge and the big picture is this you're going to tune the guitar open with a harmonic on the 12th and then what you do what you do is you, you check it with a note on the 12th and the harmonic on the 12th um, the harmonic is going to be the actual tune of the string and then when you check it on the 12th if it matches you have intonation okay so and the easy way to remember which way you gotta go okay is flat head if the note you fret is flat you're gonna go towards the headstock move it this way what that does you see relative when it's flat okay by moving this towards the headstock you have shortened the distance between here and here you see flat means it's too long so by shortening it you're going to bring the pitch up remember uh, strings longer strings lower frequency uh, thinner strings higher frequency as you shorten it it gets higher okay so what uh, you might want to have is one of these doohickeys for changing strings. It's going to save you a lot of wear and tear on your fingers. A tuner, of course. Uh, I do not have a very expensive tuner because I'm a broke ass. But I do like this little thing here, which uh, I usually keep on my guitar at all times. If you can see it there, where is it? There it is. This little thing, no endorsement. Oops, no endorsement. But basically what it is, let me turn it this way. What it does is while you're uh, checking it, if you can see that there, see how it shows. Come on, where are you? No, oh, fuck. Look. Something like that, you see? And, whoop. Mm, right there. And it's a little meter and it goes across using the vibrations in the guitar itself. So it's handy dandy, it doesn't interrupt your signal or anything like that, it just goes by the vibrations on your guitar. So as a spot check, you can always have this. And I also use a tuner app. There's an app for that. You can get a tuner downloaded on your iPhone, which I use, and that just listens to the sound and works very well. Yes, you can have a better tuner, yes, you can spend a lot of money on a tuner that are more accurate true ins but uh, you know those things are so accurate 
um, they're more accurate than the fluctuations you're going to have in temperature. Something I want to point out, a couple of things I'll show you while I'm tuning it, is that the strings made out of metal, you know, there's thermal expansion. Uh, believe it or not, when you pick up a guitar, the strings are at a certain temperature. Okay, if as you're playing it, these strings actually warm up from your body temperature, heating up the strings, right? So, if you pick up a guitar slightly out of tune because the metal as it's cooled off has what? Contracted, right? And by contracting, it's tighter, get pitch up, different metals, different thicknesses, different coefficient of expansion, they're going to be slightly out of tune when you just pick it up. Play it, warm it up, might get into tune. I'm talking about very slight variations. Now, when you tune it and you haven't touched it too much and it gets perfectly in tune and then as you're playing it warms up and even your guitar wood warms up you know you may notice it goes a little bit out of tune this is normal you know expansion causes that same reason there's cracks in the sidewalk to uh, allow for thermal expansion now the other thing when you are tuning the guitar once you get it a string in tune something you want to do is grab it right somewhere in the middle and yank that bitch down like that and stretch it farther than you're ever gonna bend right and then tune it again and you'll find that stretches everything so that as you're tuning it it goes into tune nice and stretched um, takes up any slack so that if you tune it and you start playing you bend a note when you bend it playing you've taken that slack up and all of a sudden that string's out of tune again. So it's an iterative process. You tune it, stretch it, tune it, stretch it, go down the strings, start over again. You'll notice another thing, the tension from the other strings, you tune this one perfectly. By the time you get to the end, if they were a little bit flat or whatever, and you've increased the tension, guess what? You just added more tension on the neck, pulls the neck slightly forward, now you go back and your E string is slightly flat again. So it's an iterative process. You close the gap, get right to where you gotta be, right? Okay, a lot like calculus, you know. As H approaches zero, the limit goes to zero. Anyway, I am now uh, gonna break for a moment. See, there it is. Check this out. Okay. to show you tuning a guitar is as you've ever been in a band you ever heard somebody tune at full volume anyway uh, so this now is in tuning each individual string <clears throat> is even an individual string will have waivers and uh, kind of funky sound. Like, okay. You hear that? It's not a solid tone. It's kind of flat and shit like that. This guitar isn't too far out of intonation. You can always easy check for intonation. You hit the, the third and second string like the top of a D chord here, see like this, three, two. Hit, now just hit open and third. A little bit off. A little bit of a waver there. Go up the neck, you'll see. Now I'm gonna move the third string a little bit so you'll start to hear a little bit more pronounced. In effect, you know, simulating what it would be to out, be out of intonation, watch. Hear it? That's good. That wow, that wow, 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 wow sound because it's not at a uh, 
a good chord fraction between the two and you start getting that resonance wave and distortion will make it more pronounced so like you may be in tune here pretty good go up here you see it start creeping in as the differences start adding up there's very very small differences but that's all it takes again the easiest way to tell you hit this one and then hit open in third that's a hard one to do if, it, if, if you can do that you're, you're pretty close to the intonation on those those are the most important ones the other ones aren't too bad but the, the the solid strings here and the change from the third to the second is always the trickiest part okay so you see this one even though this one is in tune you still hear a little bit of wavering there because the strings are very old begin okay uh, first thing you want to do remove the old strings and uh, with one of these take them off like I said this is very useful to save yourself all the trouble of doing it by hand like this it takes forever right and voila done next Actually, you just got to get it loose enough that you can flip it off and go. But, you know. This is like five bucks, four bucks for one of these things. You know? Continue. And. You get the idea. Um, this guitar, like many sustained solid bodies, is what's called you know strength through the body they go through and uh you gotta push them out the back and uh by the way you know these are wires they tend to flick when you put them so be careful don't get flicked in the eye with one of these wires um now that you've got all the strings off a couple of things you can do that they're out of the way one of them of course dust it up there clean it off with uh you know a towel maybe a slight damp rag no harsh chemicals or anything just dust it off and clean it off also you got a nice uh, unobstructed view of all the frets so uh, you know do a little surface visual inspection there see if you've got any frets that have a cut maybe from the guitar being dropped hit on the face the strings will cut into the fret and leave a ooh, look I cut myself whoops um, leave a little notch in there Fuck. leave a little notch in there and you won't notice unless you hit it and then when you do hit it I'll <coughs> okay. well that's not the exact sound it'll make but something like that and it's a little notch and if it's pretty bad you're going to have to have it refretted or live with it avoid that note and uh, another thing I'm going to do with this one is uh, put a little since this is a rosewood fretboard you know I'm going to go ahead and put a little light coating of uh, lemon oil on there you know that's light coating basically you just get a towel I gotta go find it somewhere and just a light coating lemon oil for the fretboard and uh, the frets themselves with a very light grit uh, shine them up over there try to keep them nice and smooth lightly very lightly just take off a little bit of the surface oxidation if it has any okay be right back okay so now that you dusted it off or whatever, clean up the headstock, you know, just wipe it down, get the dust out of there, you might as well. <coughs> Excuse me. The frets might have some surface oxidation on there. Like I said, if uh, if there's a cut, okay, um, that's going to need repair, you know, because if you try to grind it down, now you've got a nice little <laughs> spot that's going to buzz when you play that note and it hits the next fret. And concerning buzzing, uh, 
I'll go ahead and do that later on too. Raising or lowering the bridge and the nut here is how you set the action, uh, how low it is, you know. Most people want to get it as low as they can without buzzing anywhere so you have good action and you can play well. Well, play as well as you can. Anyway, what I did, take a little bit of a thousand wet or dry steel wool, very, very light stuff. Remember, you're not removing material. Okay, all you want to do is take off a little surface oxidation or whatnot, you know, very lightly, just on the frets, like this. Okay, and give it a nice little shine, that's it. So, uh, you know, when you're playing, you're playing uh, up and down and sliding, you don't have any of that surface on there, which if you bend every note everywhere, you'll kind of clean it off anyway. But uh, it also gives it a nice aesthetic. If you happen to be playing on stage, you know, good luck to you. Uh, the light, you know, shines, looks nice. That's all there is to it, okay? Remember, lightly, you're not removing material. You're just doing a little surface oxidation removal. That's it. And do not press so hard that the abrasive hits the wood and you end up with, uh, you know, the wood getting scratched. That's not nice. Okay? Careful, lightly. That's all there is to it. Be right back. Okay. So, I'm not going to adjust the bridge just yet because it seems like it was set pretty good before. Very playable. Um, if you would, you see the height of that? You see those two screws right there that raises or lowers this, the bridge? Okay, that changes the angle when it goes lower and how close the strings are. You'd say, well, put it down all the way. Well, believe it or not, it can't go down all the way because you get buzzing. Okay, so somewhere between here and there, you've actually got to have a slight angle when it touches one fret so it goes over the rest. If it's all the way down, that it hits a fret, that's the buzzing. Okay, so. I'm going to start putting in the strings. You see it's got a nice little bit of a, the frets have a little bit of a shine right there. Can you see it? See? That's all it was. Very lightly did that. Okay. Another thing also, I will, uh, once I have the strings on, maybe adjust the pickups. I'll cover that very shortly. So I'm going to start putting on the strings. They go in the rear. Okay. I guess always ask permission first and there's always time for lubricant. But uh, I'm going to start putting in that in the six holes right there. All right, let's get to it. Okay, uh, by the way, little spinner thing, pliers that can snip, the strings and wire, and uh, this is optional, but a little ratchet, you know, 10 millimeter for this one. Why? Well, since you got the stuff off of there, what you want to do, hold on. Okay, so, you know, while you have everything off, you do all this stuff. See that very thin nut right there? A little flat nut, okay? That is what holds the tuner in good position there. You want to make sure you check that, see if they're not loose. A little play on the, the post itself, you know, not all tuners are equal standard pretty good tuners like that and I have a little bit of play there's more expensive ones nice ones kind of tighter okay but I'm talking about the nut that holds the uh, the tuner right there you don't want to use a uh, adjustable wrench um, which is sloppy work anywhere to put it on there because it's very flat you'll put it on there you'll end up rounding things slipping off scratching the surface anything like that it's always best to use the exact best tool um, that's all there is to it. Just tighten it a little bit like that. Remember, lightly, 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 put it in there. That's it. If I had to say, I would say it's got maybe five foot pounds of torque, if that. Hmm? Delicate stuff, okay? That's it. Just make sure it's nice, seated, even. That's it. That's all there is to it. A little bit like that, okay? That's it. Not even full strength. All right? That's it. Good to go. 
okay putting the strings on the posts I just do this as a habit not required just make your life easier you know you see the hole is already there as if the strings were coming in line up each of the posts I do you know it's just a habit you line them up as if the string was already going through so when you're pulling the strings they're ready to go now when I put on the strings I'll show you but you don't go through that and then start winding what I like to do is put it through on the other side bring it down and do one complete loop with the slack that it has okay that way when I hold it it's already got one loop around you start tightening it because remember the only thing holding that string on here is basically the kink where it starts going around and the friction that's all that holds it on okay I'll get the strings about the strings um, boiling them makes them uh, a little bit better I started doing that when uh, a uh, guitarist you might know uh, started boiling them says it deadens the strings it does and it also obviously tempers the metal okay so that's optional try it maybe you like it okay be right back with the strings okay here we are now strings obviously already been boiled okay when you're handling the strings yeah I gotta say this you know be careful with that put an eye out with that you know, it's a wire so watch what you're doing I prefer to start with the bottom E string and uh, I'm gonna be putting on a set of what's called nines usually string sets are identified by the thinnest string standard they have six strings but you only this is a nine set because the high E is going to be a, uh, a 9. Uh, you can get 10s, 11s, 12, Steve A. Ray Ron 13, that's insane. Um, cover that a little bit later, let me get going. So, put it in the back, bring it out, strack it through here, and we'll put it up at the top. As such, starting at the bottom, obviously use the bottom hole. Mm -mm -mm. And guide it right through. Went in very easily. Oh never done this before huh so bring it like that see the grooves lay it over the groove okay and bring it up here and you go keep a little tension on it okay now you see how the machine heads turn should be consistent I prefer to turn whatever you would call this I guess looking down where it would be counterclockwise to tighten so that's just my style you can do it either way you want so if I was to have that on this I would have to tighten I would have to put it on the inside okay now um, some of them have little what they're called trees here to hold the strings this one doesn't so basically like I said I'm gonna go on the other side like this put it in some now this is what takes a little bit of judgment to put it in there how much slack to have on the uh, where you make the turn okay so that somewhere between uh, not having enough and it slips and having so much that your tuning head looks like a, uh, a coil of wire too much so basically a little bit like that maybe an inch of slack a little bit more and definitely on the first one put a nice hard kink on it like that come around and when you put the next one on there put it underneath okay so let me show you this okay underneath can you see that I don't know if you can all right about Nah, too close okay underneath where it goes through put the coil to go underneath so as it coils around it's going towards the headstock not up above you want it on the bottom okay you do that put it on there this is what I like to do just put it on like this you see my hand like that you don't want to bend the string with any sharp corners just put some pressure on there and then our handy dandy head spinner 
Okay, put this thing to work. Start spinning it. Careful with that thing. Talking, I did this. I want that underneath. There we go. Okay, okay. yeah. And put the slack thing that's coming off like this. Like right, that. We're gonna cut them off. I don't know why people don't. We will. Remember, watch it. That thing is there. So, and fuck, I put the spinner. There we go. And start spinning. Be a lot easier if I didn't have to show you. <laughs> God dang it. Okay, so now that I found the handy dandy spinner, that's it. You start turning it nice and slow. Just because you can go faster doesn't necessarily mean make sure it's threading properly and then keep tightening. Imagine that. Keep going. This particular machine head doesn't have too much area on the post for string. There we go. Come on. Okay. Now, if you have an ear, you heard it's a little bit tight. Already rattling. Imagine that. So, um, that's what you do. Do it six times. And by the way, you might have noticed I was trying to keep pressure on there, like I said, once you string it. Uh, I forgot to mention, the reason you want to do that is, once you get it around there, you know, the only thing holding it is the, uh, the friction in there. If you let it go, it'll spring up, make a big mess, whatever like that. So, all you got to do is hold it here, you know, while I'm spinning it, I like to do this like this, put my thumb down like that, okay, so you're cooking up slack, because you don't want to put any kinks in the string, so wherever you grab it, make sure you grab it nice and smooth, or, you know, just put your fingers on it and hold it like you're holding the string, and keep the tension on that so it doesn't pop off, if it comes a little loose and you're pulling it, it might slide, and then you don't have the kink there, and you know, you don't want to do that, okay? Okay, also, by the way, at this point, you're just putting the strings onto the point where they'll stay in place. They don't have to be tuned or tightened or anything. Just enough so that they stay where they where you put them. Okay, so you got all six strings on, right? And what I like to do is I'll tune the strings a couple of notes up. So, for example, I'll tune the E up to maybe a G and so on. The last two, not so much. You don't want to go too tight on these. You might snap it. I have to get another string. Which, by the way, I recommend always having some extra E's, the lightest one. You should always have a couple of those when you're playing at home, definitely playing live, whatever. Always get a couple of spare, well, spare packs, at the least, a spare high. So, tune these up, a couple of notes higher like the E, make it a G, the A, make it like a B or C, the D, put it up to maybe E, F, right? Then the solid ones, only one or two notes. The, the G one right here, maybe bring it up to maybe an A. Uh, the B, maybe a D. The E, only bring it up maybe just a little bit over. You don't want to snap, especially a nine. So just bring it up a little bit. Now, the reason I do that, and then you let it sit there a little bit, these new strings, remember they were tempered. Now you're stretching them out because that's how the guitar goes out of tune. You set it up in tune, you bend it, you play it, and the metal relaxes. And as it relaxes and loses tension, frequency goes down, goes out of tune. So leave it like that, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Be right back. Okay. Sorry it took so long. You can't tell, but, uh, you know, the neighbors came by. I have uh, 
two hot lesbian neighbors that came by with some really good crack, and one thing led to another, bro. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? Anyway, so this thing's been sitting, overstretching, setting them down. Okay, I'm gonna do the basics with this one. I'm not gonna bore you with tuning the guitar while you listen, for Christ's sakes. But I'm gonna show you one little thing that it's repetitive six times. What you do, you come in to the note, and every time you get on it there, right around the middle, you grab it, and you just bend it higher than you're ever gonna bend. Ain't no mountain high enough, right? Like that, you'll see, you go to tune it, it's out of tune again. Repeat as necessary, keep doing it. Get back into the key, right? Bend it up again, like that. And you'll see, well, it didn't. Okay, so what you do is you go into each note, right there. And when you get into the note, bend it up, bend it up. Hit it, you'll see it's a little bit low. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're getting into it, getting closer and closer until when you bend it, it doesn't do it anymore. Okay? Repeat as necessary. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, they're all tuned in. Each individual tuned to A440. Not plugged into the amp. You can hear it. Okay, I wanted to show you about uh, the action. You get a piece of the action. Just basically, as long as it doesn't have a buzz, a little bit there, and new strings do that, but that's about as low as you can get it. Basically, you lower these down. Don't get out of hand now. You go too low, it's going to buzz and sound like crap. You get it too high, makes it harder for the fast playing. Your style, okay? To test it, basically, you know. I'm gonna go up and down. This big, right? And you know, see? I'm not gonna test every note with you. Basically, make sure it doesn't buzz up there. I don't know if you can hear that. three different rock songs that do that GC. Anyway, now, intonation. Remember the idea is that when you play it here on the harmonic and then you play the fretted note, it has to be exactly the same. You press too hard, it's going to change the pitch. Let me plug in. Okay, uh, so at this point, the guitar is in tune, the action's good, and you know, you can hear it. Now, new strings, they do sound like they buzz a little bit, you know, really bright and everything, twang. That's just new string. That goes away very quickly. It sounds good. It sounds really good. It's in key, right? In tune. Okay, so here's a short version of what you gotta do. Remember? Flat head. Remember, screwdriver, flat ahead. That's the easiest way to remember. If you do the test, which is you hit the note, it's got a little bit of a buzz. It might be a little bit too low. You know that? That's a little bit too low. See? 
may have to adjust that. See if after the strings break in a little bit, that goes away. Okay? So, when you do the test, you hit the 12th note. Then you do the harmonic. Okay? And to hear the harmonics, by the way, if you're a new player and you're getting effects and everything, once you've got the effects you like, I highly recommend getting a wireless. They've come around to the point that they sound just as good as a cable, okay? And uh, it really frees you up to play everywhere. So, I highly recommend it. Just don't go crazy on that either. Anyway, so, flat head, flat head. I'm going to hit it here. <laughs> this shit's sharp as hell. That's spot on. Be careful when you're doing it, not to press too hard. That will change. That will, excuse me. That will change the pitch. Watch. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So, press more lightly just to get the note. That definitely needs adjustment. Fuck. I'm going to do that. Hold on. Okay. To adjust the action, okay, which is the level away from the fretboard, it's back here on the bridge. And yes, you need a flat head. Okay, and what you're going to do is you righty tighty lefty loosey and you back out a little bit. Do it in small increments, you know, maybe a half turn at a time. And you notice when we were playing, you can barely hear it unplugged. But when you plug in, you definitely can hear it. So, let me go ahead and plug in again. God damn it. Can't find a hole. Put some hair around it, buddy. Uh, okay. So, ahora que, chico. Okay. the bridge to raise the action by doing that it actually stretched a little bit so it went sharp okay You're right now when setting the action you don't have to perfectly tune it because it's going to jump around as we do this you uh do the e right and see if it buzzes right and then as you move this it will change it put it into no need to get the other ones perfectly in tune for now you want to check them but usually if you get the e not to buzz, the other ones are okay too. Go ahead and check them, but so what we do tune it, now check it. Still got a little bit, okay? Back off maybe another quarter turn. Right there. And of course, going up. We're gonna stretch it, it's gonna be sharp. Yep, up to F, so back off. And by the way, when you're tuning, you always want, suppose you go too high, you always want to come down and tighten up when you're tuning. Don't tune and then back off and go into tune. As soon as you bend or do anything, it's gonna go off. So as you want you always want to tune coming up to the pitch it needs to be. Okay? And of course, the iteration, you know, tune stretch. <laughs> now check the buzz. There it is. It's still 
very playable, and it doesn't bother. <laughs> There it is. Okay, now the other ones. They were good. Of course, it's out of tune. I moved the bridge. Okay, so. <clears throat> Not buzzing, that's good. There it is. Okay, let me tune back up, be right back. Okay, so got it back in tune. And you know, when we're doing all these, except the last final tune, all the intermediary tunings, you know, just gotta get it close enough. Don't worry about getting perfect because it's going to change when you do all this stuff. So you just want to get it there. And it doesn't matter that it's slightly out because uh, when you do this right here, the harmonic gives you the actual note. So yeah, it's got to be in tune, okay? But uh, it's going to change. Only do the perfect tuning uh, on the last one. Save you some time because it's going to dance around a lot. So once again, flat head. It's flat, harmonic, versus the fretted note. If the fretted note is flat, you move the saddle towards the head, flat head, okay? If it is sharp, you do the opposite. If you hit the harmonic and then you hit the note and it's sharp, you have to go towards the bridge, which is you pull it back this way. Now, in this case, this one, the note lightly because if you press it too hard it will go sharp just enough to fret it it's cut hair sharp okay um, so being as that it's sharp we take a Phillips a small Phillips and right in there is a the screw now on some of these if you can't get it to move you may have to loosen the screen the string, the string, the string, move it an estimated amount, okay, do it again, it's an iterative process, all of this, very boring, okay, be right back, okay, luckily for me, on this one, this kind of bridge, I can actually make the adjustments right there, I backed up, I'd say maybe a quarter turn, obviously, it went out of tune a little bit, I set it in tune, you hit the harmonic and then you hit the fretted note and it's right there repeat six times okay now that we've tuned everything and as you get closer to done yes you take the effort and get a perfect tune and on this one I had to make a couple of adjustments uh, of course usually the changes are right around here Especially if you go, this had 10s, we went to 9s, so you will have to change a little bit. And as you notice, it does have, if you can notice, not too much, a little bit of the, the first three will be like this, and then the next three will be like this. The classic, you know, saw pattern, I guess you could say. Okay, and now, this thing is not going to stay in tune. You're going to have to check it as you play for the next day or so because little changes make a big difference. Let me see. Even in the minutes now, it could have changed. The D chord is awesome. When it's perfect, it's great. It's right there. How do you do spot checks? Well, try doing the little uh, D. No, os no oscillation. Then try it open third with the... Uh, third fret on the second see there's nothing I'm gonna move a little bit so you can see what it would sound like if it's a little bit off watch
starts to waver. Now, you know, try the other ones. The top two strings, do the fourth, or a straight up and down, the two of them. Then the fifth. What I mean by the fourth is, this is a fourth when you do the two strings vertically, and the other one is a fifth when you do one and then the next one up two. That's a fifth of playing the fourth. Okay, not the fourth fret. Do it anywhere. It should go, especially when you go up the neck, that's where you would notice if the intonation is off. Because sometimes you can have the intonation that it's, it's good up here, but then it starts to, you know, waver and wallow when you get up. So check it up here. It's good. pressure when you play with distortion like that it brings it out so much that even if you press too hard it's enough to make enough of a change that you'll start to hear it so when you're doing this you have to do it you know carefully not just the way you play so there it is that's off <laughs> I'll be at it too playing already. Just from playing it's got attitude. <laughs> mm, gonna have to edit some, I couldn't believe it. I just recorded five minutes of tuning. I'll spare you that. <coughs> I'm gonna die. You will die. This thing has gone out of tune so much, just looking at it, these strings haven't settled in yet, obviously. Ugh, they keep drifting, and it'll do that for a while, but, boy, these are drifting. See? Perfect. Now, if you're doing this, and you notice, it's where it's good, and you do it, and you hear the waver, make sure you're not fretting the, the chord a little bit out of perfect alignment which happens sometimes with the slightest variation these you know high strings with distortion you're gonna hear it the slightest deviation you're gonna hear it so like that's correct now if I happen to be lazy and I fret it wrong because I'm I'm actually stretching one of the one of the strings inadvertently. So do it there too. There it is. So, bottom line, remember, you do the harmonic, you do the fret. If the fret is flat, flat head, you go towards the headstock on the bridge. Okay? If it's sharp, you gotta increase the space. Spot check, this thing might be out again. No, there it is. tune it again. It's going to do that for the next three or so until they get completely settled in. This thing's really, you know, just by looking at it goes out a little bit. And remember, 
These variations are very slight. The high notes through distortion, the slightest variation out of tune, you're going to hear it. So, now try it higher up. And remember, if it's in, if it's intonated and you happen to hear one that sounds like it's wavering, make sure you're fretting it right because the slightest variation you're going to hear it and if you play one of these chords and you happen to be inadvertently bending the string a little bit you're going to hear it. <laughs> 